Hello and welcome. The concept of limits is a little bit abstract and uh, may take a little bit of time to get used to. Even for me when I was learning this uh, it took a little time for me to understand what this was all about. So instead of trying to explain uh, what they are, let's just go ahead and do an example. I want to explore the limit as x approaches infinity or as x gets larger and larger and larger what happens to the function 3x minus 4 divided by x. So let's just numerically test for what happens to this function as x gets larger and larger. So let's start with x is equal to 1. When x equals 1, 3 times 1 minus 4 is negative 1. So divided by 1 is going to be negative 1. Let's increase it by an order of magnitude. Let x equals 10, what happens then? So 3 times 10 is 30, minus 4 is 26, divided by 10 is 2.6. Let's increase the order of magnitude of x again to 100. So 3 times 100 is 300, minus 4 is 296, divided by 100 is going to be 2.96. If we increase it to 1000, what happens? So 3 times 1000 is 3000, minus 4 is 2996 divided by 1000 is going to give us 2.996 so we can see a bit of a pattern emerging here so if I let it increase to 10,000 we should end up with 2.9996 and if we do it once more to convince ourselves when x is equal to 100,000 3 times 100,000 minus 4 and divide by 100,000 should give us 2.99996. So it's pretty easy to see what's going on here. As x gets larger and larger, so as x approaches infinity, the function of x approaches the number 3. So the function gets closer and closer to 3. So as, get, as x gets larger and larger and larger, the function gets closer and closer and closer to the number 3. So therefore we say the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x minus 4 over x is equal to 3. Now let's do another example. The limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared minus 12 all over x minus 2. Now this function is going to be undefined at x is equal to 2 because when x is equal to 2 uh, we get a case of division by 0. So the function is undefined or cannot be determined at x equals 2 but nonetheless we can still find the limit of the function as x approaches 2 or I should say we may be able to find the limit of the function as x approaches 2. And in order to do that, because I have an actual uh, value here of 2 and not uh, some infinitely large number, I have to approach it in this manner. If I draw myself a number line with the number 2, to find the limit I have to approach this value from both sides. So I have to approach this value from the right hand side and I also have to approach this value from the left hand side. I'm going to call this side the positive side and I'm going to call this side the negative side. You'll also hear the terms approaching the value of 2 from above or below. Any of these variations is fine. So let's look at the case when we're approaching 2 from the positive side. So I'm going to denote that with a 2 plus. 
All right, let's see what we get when x is equal to 2.1. When x equals 2.1, the function evaluates to 12.3. When x equals 2.01, our function evaluates to 2.03. When x equals 2.001, the value is 12.003. I think you can see a pattern starting to emerge. And if I do one more, 2.001, we'll get 12.0003. Uh, so it's clear that um, as x approaches 2 from the right that we get closer and closer to 12. But let's see if uh, the same thing happens when we approach the value of 2 from the left. And I'm going to denote that with a 2 minus. So approaching 2 from the negative side. Let's set x equal to 1.9. When x equals 1.9 we get 11.7. When x equals 1.99, we'll get 11.97. And as we get closer to 2, if we let x equals 1.999, we'll get 11.997. And quite clearly, I'll do one more just to prove it. 1.9999 will get 11.9997. So clearly as x approaches 2 from the uh, left side or from the negative side, it is also approaching the value of 12. So, so we can conclude that as x approaches 2, f of x approaches 12. And therefore we say the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared minus 12 all over x minus 2 is equal to 12. Alright, so the whole concept with limits is if I were to take the limit as x approaches a certain number, let's call it c, from both the positive side and from the negative side and apply it to a certain function f of x and I get the answer L, I get a finite answer I get a finite the value that is then L is what we call the limit and likewise if we apply the concept to x approaching positive or negative infinity and apply it to a certain function f of x and we get a finite answer and we also have a limit in this case. If we were to have the scenario that if we take x approaching a very large number, positive or negative infinity, of a certain function and as x gets larger and larger and larger the uh, function also gets larger and larger and larger that, so it doesn't actually converge to a, uh, a certain limit that is. So as x gets larger and larger and larger the function also becomes infinity then there is no limit to such a function. Also, if we take the limit of x as it approaches c from the positive, so from the positive side, and it equals one value, and if we take the same approach but from the negative side, and uh, we get a different value then there is also no limit to such a function. 
you might be asking how that might be. Well, I'll just quickly demonstrate here. If I have a just a rough graph with a function that goes like this and it gets broken and it gets broken at this line here, so at this value, let's say that is x equals to 2 and it continues on from x equals 2 to do something like this well, as x approaches 2 from the negative side, we see that it, is, it has a certain value here. And x, as x approaches 2 from this side, it has a certain value here. So the values as x approaches 2 from, from the different sides yields a different answer. So that means we don't have a limit for this function. And uh, this is actually a perfectly valid function. But this is a little bit above our level at the moment, so I won't uh, speak of it any further. In my next video, I'm going to do some examples on how to use different techniques to find the limits of functions, so stay tuned for those. If you have found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you are currently studying math, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you on exams or assignments. And as always, please feel free to ask me any question by commenting on any of the videos that you've seen. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.